here we are with Chronicles of Darkness, Creepy Rashomon, Marine Buffet, Werewolf the Forsaken, The Itagam Chronicles, Episode 1. We are in November 2017, and I am Devin, the Storyteller. To my left is X playing Y. Nicole playing Leo Kelly. Kevin playing Kaiser Vargas. And Peter Asfiodo Vaisalovich Patrov. And uh, what are your werewolf um, types and types? <laughs> uh, Leo is a... I actually don't know how to say this. Like, is Thayer? You said it right in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, the name that the actual, like... Yeah, it's it's whatever that one is. The Ithayer, the oh. spirit ones. And she's a hunter in darkness. Kaiser is an Araka and a Bone Shadow. And Fyodor is an Elodorf Iron Master. Perfect. So, uh, now that we're following up from episode zero, where we went over the themes of Werewolf, brief character descriptions again, uh, what the pack looks like, and all that stuff, we'll dive on into episode zero one. What's up, Kevin? Hmm? Oh, nothing. You looked yeah. eye strain. Quizzical. All right. So, in this episode, listeners, we're going to start off, as the book suggests, at a funeral. The funeral of one of the pack mates, who has died recently. All of the characters here have been werewolves for about over a month. They've come together with the other pack mates we described previously, all 15 of them. And this is going to outline the death of Mule, one of the human members. He is dead at the ripe old age of 70, death by Caesar. Death by being clumsy. Being death, clumsy. Death by jump scare. What happened to old Mule, who, you know, is 70, has hung out with various parts of the werewolves for, you know, maybe five years at this point, is you guys were hunting a spider spirit in the Japan Dome, you guys were doing planning and stuff, Kaiser, for various reasons, went into a death rage, you guys tried to track him down and stop him, and he came out, spooked Mule, Mule tripped backwards while walking on an overpass, fell about eight feet, hit his head in the concrete, went to a coma. Then his brain died, and now it's his funeral. So the coma killed him. Well, he didn't die, his brain did. The unplugged from life support killed him. Ronald Reagan killed him. Just picture he was like, okay, just in a coma, and Kaiser like tripped on the uh, cord. <laughs> oh! <laughs> seeing, as how, seeing how quickly his mental health declined after the Vietnam War and the cancer from Agent Orange, it was really Ronald Reagan that killed him. <laughs> Let's blame it on that. His VA benefits uh, did not get to him the way they were supposed to, to help him cope with life outside of the war. It's a common tale. <laughs> Thank you, Sad Ronald. tale. Thank American you, Ronald Reagan. Tale. Your legacy is secure. So, you are in a community center in the Promenade Dome. It has a full-service bar that you pay for with your various illegal monies. That is self-service. No, wait, it's full-service and self-service or diametrically opposed. It's a self-service <laughs> bar. There's booze here for you. And you have to go take it. There's yeah. no bartender. There isn't a bartender. The only person you're not part of the pack is the vicar. The vicar is giving uh, Mule his last sacraments when he's in that little suit in his open casket. Because... Yeah. That's not how it works. The last sacraments are things you say to people when they're still alive. The vicar is giving you all his last sacraments. <laughs> He's talking about transubstantiation and divinity and Mary Magdalene and a bunch of stuff Catholicism loves to talk about over and over again. He's very engaged with what he's doing. I guess he's old. Yeah, well, Mule was old. He was like 70 when he uh, was killed <laughs> by one of you. Really, it's the gravity that killed him. There are three rows of chairs, each with five or six in them, to fill all 15 people here. And it is like 8 p.m. because you're not vampires. Oh, and it's Halloween! Shit, I forgot. Yeah, like all the other games. <laughs> it's Halloween, October 31st, 1980. 1980X. 1980. <laughs> so, yeah. The vicar then, like, kind of moves to the crowd. Would anyone like to say anything on behalf of the deceased? Kaiser's just kind of been staring off into the distance, and he just kind of 
Well, he doesn't raise his hand. He just gets up and kind of walks slowly over there. Shame. He's Shame. kind of wearing, like, dress clothes-ish under a hoodie. <laughs> he doesn't have nice clothes. Not with all the drug money you guys have? She has resources four. You couldn't do a pretty woman makeover for this? I have resources three. Oh, disgusting. Still pretty good. He has resources too, but he doesn't really do much with it. Also, if he buys nice clothes, it's going to be nice kind of clothes that he wears. Not nice kind of clothes that he's never going to wear. He didn't wear his bone pendants, which is bone! Of, so that's... <laughs> that's an improvement. Kaiser just kind of walks up. He's like, so, uh... Yul and I liked watching movies together. He really liked The Thing. And, uh... And he just kind of stares off into the distance for a while. For a while. And the vicar sat down and put on noise-canceling headphones as requested by the family of the deceased. <laughs> mm. He was yeah. just nodding along. And, uh... And he just kind of stares off and then turns around and kind of brushes his hand over his face. Not touching it, but just uh, using... Eyes of the dead to see his last moments. <laughs> uh, you jumped out, like like jumped out of the mist that seemed to appear when you guys were on the hunt. And he was like, oh, oh, grabs his heart because he's having a micro stroke, and then he's falling backwards, and then like a coconut sound, he hits his head. <laughs> so after a further awkward silence, <laughs> where Kaiser just kind of drifts off mid sentence, oh, he just kind of walks off to the side again. <laughs> oh. Oh. He pulls up his hood and just sits there. Does anyone else want to go up and say a few words? Okay, I guess Fyodor goes over there, speaks some words about, you know, his past, about they used to work together back in the day, you know, he used to be such a, you know, hardworking individual, you know, helping build this city here. But, you know, later his health declined, so he couldn't, like, continue, so... Agent Orange. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, like, small reminiscent things of the past they had to get there before they turned werewolves. Well, Fiona did. You got anything, Nicole's character? I do not have anything. <laughs> Baby killer! Leo. <laughs> Coming up with a sentence as baby killer, make love not war. <laughs> oh, hippies. Filthy hippies. <laughs> I'm glad Nixon had you guys made illegal to exist. <laughs> Bernard, the Rahu blood town that we described last episode, walks up. Leader of the pack, or the original founder. Mill and I go way back. We were uh, deployed together, you know. Pretty, uh, you know, pretty upstanding guy. And he is dead now. And then he goes and sits down. Someone, like, snaps their fingers in front of the vicar's face. And he's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Takes off the headphones. Goes up. Well, all right. Uh, God loves all his children and takes them from us without warning into his loving embrace as is his divine plan for us all. And thus, in the spirit of Christianity, we commit Johann Emanuel Rothschild II to the ashes in the way he specified in his will, fired out an empty torpedo into the, into the crevice in the, outside the city. He then puts on a record where Beyond the Sea starts playing. Who's paying for that? <laughs> That's his name? Johann Emanuel Rothschild II. All right. He was a Jehovah's Witness. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Don't you put that evil on him, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's just talking about how he's like a Christian versus like, it's like, wasn't he Jew Jehovah's Witness? He's like, no, he was Jewish. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he was a Mason. <laughs> A Freemason? No, like a like a Charles Mason. Mason? No, the late bricks. <laughs> exactly. Like a Charles Mason. 
All right, well, if no one has anything to say to his body or final words, they pack it up and the, 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 the meeting is brought out to, like, the outside of the dome and you can see his body kind of ferried out on a tube and dropped into the crevice. Plunk. No. 800 so billion right? miles deep into the ocean below. We, we just launched a full body out there. It wasn't this an open casket. You know? Yeah, then they closed it. And launched him into the sea? Yeah, into the crevice in between that the last one sits on. That's specified in his will. Huh. Interesting. Interesting that you can do that down here. Right? I was like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but I mean, whatever. I'm just picturing like yeah. his broken corpse and the broken bits of the missile like flopping up against the uh, promenade dome. <laughs> no, no, no. There's like, there's like a fault that goes deep into the center of the earth or whatever, however it works. They just drop shit down there. How full is it of corpses? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the earth is so big, it can't be that full. Like, like at least less than 0.1%. There's a bunch of vampires down there. I know! Look at all the spirits. Uh. Yeah, as a funeral thing, you could just have your entire human body tossed into the crack between the tectonic plates that the last one sits on. Thousands of millions of miles down. Thousands of millions of miles down. Let's have some mage put something in there and start pulling all the spirits through the sympathetic connection. May just going through there taking the jewelry off the body's <laughs> fingers. I'm picturing it being tossed out there and then, the, you know, powering up those freaking roaming corpses. Yeah, probably. Not their problem. Not their splat. <laughs> also, what? Do you think bodies are buried or cremated here? Shh. Just I assume cremated, yeah. yeah just dump them! I mean, oxygen is at the premium here. There's so many things wrong with that, Devin. <laughs> They just put them in a casket and dump them into the crack. The I crack mean, is enormous. It goes on forever. I mean, they could just start tossing them into the volcano we have. Like, how secure are these things? The bodies would just float up. <laughs> float? Dude, it's so many miles beneath the sea. It would be crushed by pressure instantly. Yeah. <laughs> squeeze like it's... Look on Kevin's face. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this. The science checks out. Now, now, people who listen to this podcast are going to be like, well, actually... Uh, if no one talks about in the Discord or Reddit or any place where we post about how uh, the science doesn't check out, then everyone listening tacitly agrees with me and agrees the science checks out. Okay, Kevin, quickly post something. <laughs> so, like, remember that person on the Discord, like, today or yesterday, I think, that was talking about what all of our podcasts are like? And the example for Devin is, what even is science? <laughs> yeah, that. The world is flat, Anthony. You dumb bitch. And I'm going to prove it mathematically. And just because he got lucky. And <laughs> I wasn't getting lucky. No argument you could have made could have won that. Your power was not strong enough. Eh. Yeah. Eh. So, yes, you safely and scientifically, securely dispose of Mule's body. And then there's a reception back at that community center. Beyond the Sea is still playing when you get back. Which I'm not playing because that's too many dips and dives in the in the track. <laughs> I don't want to be interfering with the, the recording. I also don't have it on here to have to open up a YouTube thing. It's just it's not worth it, okay? It's a bit. <laughs> okay. I'm referencing X Files when Scully's dad dies. Really? Uh, it's this whole thing, Star Child, which is what he calls her. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's his whole thing. Anyway, no, that's uh, a thing. So yeah, all of you: Bernard, Suosia, Finn, Chad, Gloria, M, Tess, Misty, Sammy, Jessica, Clifford, and Jay. And you three. That's right, Jay. Are all uh, are all at the funeral hall? You all have drinks. Yep. <laughs> what? We're all just like so awkward right now. Thousand mile stairs. Well, you know, the death of Mule, you really did the number of the pack. I was like, hey, we fucked up here. And did you, you see know. the game last week? Mm. Oh my god, they fumbled that ball so bad. <laughs> I had seven. Did you Chris display last night? I had $700 on that game. 
so mad about it. I don't even know what game you're talking about, but that's horrible. Nah. It's just eating me up. I, I can't even be, I can't even look at anyone right now. This is M. Fuck. He's like pitching originals. It's just it's so hard to cope with. <laughs> Jesus. So who's gonna replace horse now that he's dead? <laughs> Says Gloria. Kaiser just kind of slowly turns his head towards Chad. Chad's smiling. He's like, this is a great networking party, guys. He'll probably bounce a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mule is a mule? Mule is a... Courier. Courier. It's a great networking party, guys. I can't believe we actually even took a break after the bar to uh, see some fireworks into the uh, crevice. It's a great time. Jesus what? Lord! <laughs> How is that even work? <laughs> <laughs> on the other fireworks. Well, like they put a little red light on it so you can see it go into the crevice. I guess if this one flares itself a little bit. Yeah, like there's a light on it blinking. <laughs> so you can see it go in. Like, I got it. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just blown away by how fucking stupid Chad is. <laughs> so is that Vicar, our new contact? I don't think so. Like that was the point, right? We crashed this uh, this party to uh, get in touch with him, right? Sure, Chad. All right, all right, good. Cause yeah, I I took like the initiative. He's totally down now. He's buying product. Chuck. It was easy. <laughs> Selling drugs to the priest? No, his name's Vicar. <laughs> his name's not priest, his name's Vicar. And Chef, <laughs> totally. I, I took it I, just, I took the initiative, guys. Don't worry. That look on Nicole's face. <laughs> oh. He wanted to he was uh, doing absinthe and I'm like, oh, that's for nerds. So uh I got him mixed up with some of our product. I got the hookup going. If he's stupid enough to think absinthe does anything, you can probably just sell him anything. Sell Fun him. fact, the word he used was absolution. <laughs> <laughs> this will reveal itself <laughs> later. I he said that. <laughs> the word the vicar used was absolution and praying for Chad's soul. Chad, of course, reinterpreted this in only the way he could. <laughs> How much to buy another one of those coffins? <laughs> like seven hundred dollars. <coughs> That's affordable. <laughs> <laughs> That's affordable. It's like, hey, it's something you only have to do once. You don't have to pay for the lot like you do with you know conventional land jobs. <laughs> is that how that works? You have to like, continue paying. That is. That cannot is, be how that works. Sushioya, the Kadith Stormlord, is like, yeah, that's how it works. You have to keep paying for lot fees, topside. That's why if you invest in an under the sea burial, it's a one time payment and it's taken care of, and your family doesn't have to suffer the consequences. That does not seem real. It does not seem real you have to keep paying rent on your grave. I mean, if not. It's definitely how it works, right? I mean, if not, it's how it works, topside, but you live down here. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, you could get cremated and then you spray out or whatever, or. That's yeah. illegal. Uh, well, exactly, and we don't want to commit crimes, so you know, there's several packages we actually offer. <laughs> I mean, if you don't pay for the ground, they just take your remains and put them in some communal That's grave. exactly how it works on Topside. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Land is in a premium up there. They, they take down graveyards to build like condos and parking garages. That's why I set a mule up with the Excelsior package. Streamlined coffin, excellent uh, <coughs> drop into the crevice. We even uh, lined the inside of this coffin with felt and, uh... Yeah. Streamlined for a quick dip down. <laughs> Suyoshia sells funeral and... Uh, yeah, I got that. I got that. He sells life insurance. Is he also one of yours, Peter? Yeah, he's a Freemason. <laughs> <laughs> he just tells people you have to pay rent on cemeteries topside. 
should we bring someone new in new for the courier job? Should we? Bernard is drinking like he has like scotch or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if one of us here can pick up the slack, I don't see a need for us to have to bring in anyone new at the moment while we're still balancing out. I think what would help is catching that spider spirit. That was uh, that seems to be uh, we we a win would help on our mule's death. Yeah. If it's found a host. Do you think it found a host yet? <coughs> How fast these things normally work? It was in spirit form we were chasing it, right? Mm-hmm. That's, where we, that's where we left off with that? Yeah. Hmm. Well, it probably won't new, re, nest in the Japan Dome anymore. Where do you think it fled? Domes are kind of dead. Which... Russian Dome would have the most spacious sewers, places to mm. hide, infest. Is that what you think, um... Mm. Well, if he wants to get away, Theodore. <laughs> if he wants to get away from the crowds, he might go into more of the maintenance uh, domes, away from the crowds, perhaps find some worker, bear or somewhere in there. That makes a lot of sense. Not a lot of foot traffic. You'd know more about the undersea than uh, we would. Yep. Yeah. Probably get some schematics in those and try figuring things out, but those things are. Convoluted. What kind of access do you have to the schematics? Well, I'm an architect, so you know I've got the the archives. Do you three think you can take care of that then? Definitely could have a look there. Yeah, best not to bring any more humans into it. Mm. Fair enough. Saito and I will uh, take care of the pack, and we'll look into. Making sure it hasn't head into Canada or Russia. Okay. I wonder if there's any spirits we can reach out to. Hmm. This isn't like London. There's not a lot of CCTV down here. Uh, Russian Dome. Russian Dome. What would be there? The KGB. Spirit wise. Well, probably a lot of things related to white up being secrets and everything like that. Spotlights? Or uh, lamps, lampposts. Light sterility. We'll see what any of the uh, the lamp (coughs) spirits are up to. There's a name for them, I'll. Saito and I will look into it. All right, good meeting. And you all break from Mule's funeral. And we're back. Just making sure the theme from Dark Souls is audible to the listeners. So, you guys, uh, listeners, we paused for like an hour and a half to go over Werewolf and how Spirit World stuff worked, because this is the first time we're doing it. Because remember, we've never touched Werewolf or any of these games before, so, yeah. you know, this that a, happens. This is a research game, so... Yeah, basically. Uh, okay, so, you guys are going to go... Theodore is going to go to wherever archives exist and get archives for the Manufacturing Dome as up as he can, which doesn't need you guys, it doesn't need anyone, because Theodore is rich and worked for the city to manufacture it and an architect and has Masonic pull. So he's just going to do that. Yep. There's no obstacle there. Yep. And if people are an obstacle, he can turn into a nine-foot-tall dick <laughs> wolf and rip them apart. <laughs> so, you know. Uh-huh. Whatever. Uh, so, you have a loci? A locust? Yep. A loca? I, uh, I bought myself a locust and safe place. All right. What is a locust? Like, tell us <clears throat> what that is, Peter. So, Locus is a place where the essence gathers in an area. It's a little bit similar to the Hollow from Mages, except it's more focused on the spirit energy. And it's generally you just have the spirit of Locus or whatever, and not many other spirits in the area. So, 
yeah, it tends to like pull those essence that the werewolves can draw from or, or what have you. And it weakens the barrier between the worlds that we previously talked about, the gauntlet. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty close to the gauntlet. It's easy to cross around the lockers and so it's, you cannot cross without it, I think, for the werewolves. We, we looked up the mechanics for crossing, the reaching, and it is super easy at a locus. <laughs> yep. Okay, what is your locus? Well, I would imagine that it's well connected to my safe place as a similar rating. Both of them are four, so I think it would be a nice house, a little bit uh, Roman style, so squarish. And in the middle, you would have a small courtyard that styles as a Japanese garden, and that would be the spirit connection there. Fucking fancy as shit. Well, that's what you get. All right, so. Fyodor comes back and meets you guys at his little locust estate, where... Do, do a lot of the, the pack hang out there? Because do you need to defend that locust? Do you need to, like, maintain it? Um, I think you need to maintain it. Um, I know it's my touchstone. There's something that in it at all. If I interact with it, then it just uh, reserves the essence for me or something like that. So, yeah, I think, you know, if something comes over, then, you know, I get the pack over. But... I'm not sure that we hang out all that much around it. I guess all it right. makes sense. Does it need defending, like on the real world side? Um, no, you know, I own it, you know, in the real world. Therefore, most people don't okay. get to Do it. Do you let uh, the other pack members use it to flip? Um, yeah. That's all right, right. then, yeah, odds are the other two NPC, uh, Garu or whatever they're called, probably, uh, you know, do their best to maintain and keep it safe when they use it. Yeah. Rough, rough. Urathra. Garus for the old world of darkness. It's also some Loop term Loop Garu. Loop Garu. All right. Fun fact. Fun side. Jaunt. Uh, so werewolves in D&D are werewolves, right? Yeah. So that's a man that turns into a wolf monster. Yeah. In D&D, for some reason, Loop Garu, the French term for werewolf, are reverse werewolves that are wolves that turn to man under the full moon. Wolf man. <laughs> They turn to the real monster. The real monster's man. <laughs> They're called Loop Garu. Just throwing that out there. Alright, so you all gather at this extravagant Roman Colosseum Chinese garden place that uh, Theodore owns, that is a locus. And after we were talking, your plan is to flip into the gauntlet and then go through the gauntlet from the promenade dome into the manufacturing dome and interrogate spirits there. Also, if we can go where it last was, uh, like where we lost its trail, I can track it. So, well, maybe you can see if it's actually going there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe we'll get it sent in the spirit world as well. Yeah, we can look up the mechanics for that. Either. But you have to flow over to the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a locust, and you have to roll 10 minus your harmony? Something like that. Okay, guys, it's dice time. Woohoo! Let me double check that. 10 minus harmony. 10 minus harmony. What are your harmonies? Seven. Everybody so you guys seven. get three dice. Um, I don't think you get plus two for locust, and. Was, which one was it? The, I don't know, so I'll pause. So, because it's 10 minus harmony and everyone has about harmony 7, it's three dice they get to roll. But because they're crossing into the flesh, uh, into, the into the hissle, they're, they're going to the hizzy. At a locust, they get plus two dice. And there's a little suggested modifier of staring to a reflective surface, all uh, John Constantine style, which this has a little koi pond, and it'll do to, you know, whatever allegory from here. So, you guys all get six dice. Yep. All right, I'm going to pause while you make a lot of noise rolling. We're back. Okay, so you guys all succeed, and Kevin got an exceptional success, and as per standard, he will get inspired for Caesar, which means he can make that a role he makes, succeed, get an exceptional success on three instead of five in the future, and will gain a point of willpower. So that's just tucked away for him. So uh, you guys gather around this koi pond, Japanese garden, locust area, and stare into the pool together, late at night with the overhead lights of the city above you and you guys feel it basically feels like falling backwards into like thick insulation or snow or wool 
and you're kind of being forced through a soft, doughy mold, uh, free-falling, with visions of things in the periphery of your vision, weird things, corpsey things, things that have way too many eyes with way too hollow sockets, and then you pop into the Hissel as your half-spirit, your half-ghost, so it's easy for you. Um, the Hissel. The Hissel. The Shadow. The Alternate World. You guys flip on through to the other side. And it is a weird place. This entirely artificial, urban, industrial, human city under the ocean uh, has a gauntlet that has a spirit world that is turbulent, to say the least. The locust here is fine, cultivated. It looks fairly similar to what it looks like on the in the flesh. Um, a lot of the garden is like curved in on itself, like um, almost like a pastry roll. Like if you were to like take the ground and like fold it up and up, and like the the actual garden is like the cream filling on the inside, but there's like space in between. You can see the gardening stuff in it. Uh, the Roman architecture takes on a more stylized appearance here, so it's more like an actual mini coliseum uh, with like facades of you guys and the other uh, members. Pa no, the other uh, Ratha that uh, frequent this place. Uh, your spirit's pack totem, Mary Jane, is hanging out, <laughs> which for various reasons looks like a completely laid-back uh, addiction spirit that looks like a red-headed, a long-haired, long-legged red-headed woman. Intoxication, not addiction. Intoxication. And she is littering, littering and, littering and, hand up, littering and, smoking the reefer. <laughs> it's a quote from Super Troopers, and you're a fucking philistine for not knowing it. <laughs> Each and every one of you listeners. She's lazing about. She knows that you guys have crossed over and, you know, cat. she doesn't ignore you out of disrespect. She's like, you're doing your own thing. She's doing hers. Eating up this essence at this loci. Someone has to eat all of this essence. Someone has to. Fuck, she's hungry. <laughs> hungry for essence. As we discussed in the previous episode... The uh, Pax Totem Spirit is Mary Jane, an addiction spirit. Intoxication spirit. <laughs> I'll figure it out. There's an important difference there. There it is, conceptually. So, here you are in Fyodor's loci, upside down uh, world. Topsy turvy world. And, what is your plan? What are you up to? The three of you are here. As people, you look like people, right? Yep. That's how it works. That is how it works. Do you have those lunar cast mark things going across you for your different renown shit? I think everybody does. All cool. the time. Yeah, look at that. So you have like little glowing exalted moon silver tattoos showing all your accomplishments holographing around you. <laughs> Talking about how cool you are. How uh, honorable and wise I am. How wise I was when I scared that man off a building. Wise right. and, uh, what? Wise and... Cunning. cunning. <laughs> I'm honorable and cunning. I mean, if that guy had been an enemy, that would have been a brilliant kill. <laughs> I mean, if there's no police, you didn't do anything. You just fell <laughs> off a building. An old guy fell off a building during a car attack? That's not You just walked by, and it's no wonder so many people are afraid of technology, and you just, like, flashed them a sign that said, Technology! Oh, oh my lord. Oh my god. Regonomics. Regonomics. Uh, Your legacy is secure. So yeah. <laughs> here you are in the Hissel of Atlantis 1. Uh, it's weird under here, but how would you fucking know? You guys have never seen what the Hissel looks like on land. What, have you guys? did you guys take a trip fucking to the surface? You don't know any better. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, above you uh, is the dome of the city, which looks like a, this large stained glass uh, recreation of the dome. The stained glass is in the shape of, like, interlocking, uh, like, cobbled bricks. And above it, you can see these, these pillars, these fleshy... Um, it almost looks like beluga whales. You know how they're, they're white and kind of fatty? 
It's these large cylinders of beluga whale flesh that when you kind of look at them, they're all pressing up against the cobbled dome and it kind of looks like hands. Lots of hands just kind of pushing down on the dome itself. Ah, uh, pressure spirits. Yeah. Destroy this abomination. <laughs> yeah, they all coalesce together to like hands, so it's like big fatty whale hands trying to push. Push! Yeah, the, the cobblestone stained glass of the dome looks kind of like a turtle shell almost. That's neat. There are swaying, uh, kind of like flower petals all coming off the ceiling that are the overhead, like, day-night cycle lights, and they're just kind of like shooting out beams of light, kind of like Helios would, but they have no we nowhere near the same amount of pressure or symbolism that his light has. Fun fact in the Hissel, if uh, the, the over eternally overclassed clouds of the shadow ever breach and light comes out during the day, the actual beams of light increase gravity in the area. Cool. Yeah. Fun fact. Like that one game you we were going to do. Like that one game we were going to do back in the day. Schizoid Dreams. Um, so yeah, here you are. Promenade Dome. Oh. Spotlights swaying above you, tracing around on the ground. Okay, I guess we should navigate to the Manufacturing Dome. Should be roughly in that direction. Wait. The upside down land of the shadow uh, is a mirror of the real world, the flesh, but it's vacant looking to you guys. Like, there's no people here. Uh, the streets look wider or uh, narrower, depending on which how ones are important. They are. <laughs> how important they are. Uh, the various stacked buildings and layers and stuff come across as like layers of tree bark, but just made out of like sheet metal and stuff with buildings squeezed in between them. Uh, some buildings have like almost beehive kind of uh, structures swelling out of like the stone and metal work uh, that clearly host things in them. Fastest way would be through the subway tunnels. Definitely. We could have those uh, train spirits take us there. Yeah, there is a train station. Uh, it's large and pouch-like, like a like a marsupial pouch almost, but made of like steel and meshing and whatnot. And you can see spirits. Like you guys know where spirits are. For mortals, it's really hard to detect that anything's here. But you can tell that lampposts aren't lampposts. They're actually like you know men in suits with like big lantern heads and crossed arms, staring down, kind of napping. Uh, or where certain like grates and stuff were actually like the lids to like. Um, Almost spider-like, like ambush spiders, but not the horrible kind. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like a sewer lid that's kind of like half off that has like that kind of like hermetic seal, and you can see like little eyes staring down and watching you guys as you pass through. Plastic and glass limbs that are translucent, just sticking out, waiting for something to get too close. That's spooky. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the spirit world. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to go into death rage and fight it. <laughs> I mean, you could. It just, you know, a storm drain. It's all like, oh, no. <laughs> I devoured so many spirits. I'm a powerful storm drain. Right? I guess people trip on it a lot. That's probably what that signifies. <laughs> like... We sort of murdered there. I mean, remember when we did the arts and the crafts? Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking more. <laughs> yeah, just hanging out by the station in the promenade to him, like, there's, like, certain buildings look weirder, like, they have, like, burn marks, scorch marks on them, or they look new, or some look like they're, like, sealed in wax. You know, different weird spirit stuff going on that resonates with where they came from. And there's a bar that's completely black and covered in, like, wax paper and has, like, you know, nests and hives coming out of it. <sighs> but you're at the station, and over time you hear a kind of clicking and sliding sound, like um, almost like a brake that uh, slides in the winter time when you're pushing it too hard, and the ABS gives out. And some hands are pulling itself through the tunnel, grabbing onto like uh, brakes in the uh, whatever the hell. 
and the spirit of the subway system, um, heart, um, what do they call themselves? Um, no, no, these are different. What's this? No, they, these are different. <laughs> Fucking lord. Um, and yeah, one of the, one of the, um, I'm back. Composite born ringworms. Mm-hmm. It's like a heartworm. <laughs> Constantly going around the heart. <laughs> the look on the cold face. So it's made of like composite materials, lightweight plastics and metals and stuff that's clad over a very kind of pale, uh, never seen the sun before, uh, kind of insectile, maggoty, like exoske- uh, endoskeleton that's just been plated in like composite materials. All right. And it's just, it's just pulling itself forward, and then it stops in the station and puts its arms out to kind of, like, grab onto the inside of the station. It has, like, dozens and dozens of sets of them, all of different sizes and proportions. None of them have nails. Okay, so it's an obvious way to get inside? Yeah, its shell, like, uh, will retract and open up, re- revealing its soft inner flesh. Which it's not doing, because... Why is she going on for free? <laughs> okay. Um, what counts as money here in the spirit world? Can we have some pocket change from the locus? Gathra. Can you explain Gathra to us and the listeners? Gathra is the made up Klingon word of many words that werewolf uses to explain concepts that we would know if they used the word they we would know. Gathra for spirits is exchanging goods and services with goods and services. So the spirit wants you to either so the spirit wants whatever what every NPC in every tabletop RPG wants for you to give it something of value in exchange for the service or for you to do something for it for a side quest. That's what Gathra encompasses. So either you give it essence, or you do a petty quest for it. I guess I can just give it one point of essence. I mean, it was going to go that way anyway, so yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> How does exchanging essence work? Do you, like, throw up on it or something? Like, the essence is inside you, obviously. Do you, like, pull it out? Hmm. All right, I guess we should look up how essence exchange works. All right, we're back. So... We couldn't find any sort of rule about giving essence. So I, I assume, and we're going to assume, that uh, werewolves can just give essence to spirits. Spirits can just give werewolves to essence. And there's no mechanic for it, because we couldn't find a mechanic for it in the like three or four sections we checked. Yeah, so and even, is... even if we don't have a way to take essence out of us, Spirits do have ways of taking essence, so presumably they can take it from us, whether or not we can give it. Yeah. So we just so... have to be like, yes, you can take this essence, and you're like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shit, I think I found the rule for it. Let me pause. Let me yeah, move. that was the rule. Spirits have a way of stealing essence from people, so presumably they have a way of exchanging essence as a thing. So, yes, composite, born, uh, heart, ringworm... Uh, puts out his hand, one of his hands, a little tiny childlike hand that's a, that's stemming off of his one of his larger fingers. I guess I with my hands. It's so gonna take it from me. And you shake, and he takes an essence off of you, and his shell of composite materials and aerospace stuff opens up, and there's a nice soft little in carriage. So go on in with those fleshy cushions. That seals up, and he just starts pulling his way along the tubes. The, the blood vessels of the city, the heart valves. By the heart warm it is. So yeah, he goes around the city, and then eventually splits off uh, towards the manufacturing dome. And like you see, there's, a, there's other things in these tubes, like other ones like him, that he kind of like avoids. Because <laughs> there are multiple tram... Yeah. Things in here. And yeah, he stops off at the station and like uses his fist to like pound open like the, the station door and like wrench it open and then just lets you offload. We step on out. Alright, you are in the manufacturing dome. 
The manufacturing dome um, is a hot mess of like steam and smoke and uh, constantly fire burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire spirits, um, impacts, impact, uh, destruction, creation, rending. You don't see the spirits around, but you can definitely hear and sense their presence. Because this is a big place full of turning raw materials into finished products. So there's like a harmonious choir of hammers and pins and pistons and uh, sledges slamming into things. And cutting. Lots of cutting. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great. It's basically a maze of machines and industrial things that don't really mirror the flesh very well, but it's, it's basically this big, almost organic maze of like pit of grinding, turning uh, machinery. Okay, so I think we should start looking for any signs of that spirit and maybe asking other spirits whether they've seen that spider. Alright, I'm going to shift into a uh, Dalu form. The slightly bigger human form. Dire human. Yeah, dire human. Since they have better perceptions and are also very intimidating. So. Alright, so what does that look like for the first time for us to listeners to see? That's Kaiser basically gaining about a foot of height, uh, becoming more muscular, more clawed, hairier, uh, bigger teeth. Like, from far away, it wouldn't be that unusual to a human. It's just a very intimidating figure. But up close, it's clearly a horrible monster human. All right, dire Caesar. <laughs> and what are you guys doing? What are your options here? Hmm. I don't really know where to start with this. Um, let's look at the sheets. I mean, we have the investigation skill, so I guess we could start with that. Are um, you? We have. Well, at least I have an investigation skill. I can start with that. What is it? Investigation. A skill. Mental skill. Oh, like the skill. I thought you were saying something special. No. So, we're going to investigate? Yep. To what? What are you investigating? What is the end goal you're looking <coughs> for here? We're looking to find evidence of the presence of a spider spirit, either here or on the other side. So, whatever that might look like probably so like just webs. evidence of it like infesting the gauntlet nearby yep okay uh yeah roll like wits plus investigation yeah or whatever you think it is peter yeah your pick dealer's choice oh that's a chance to die just gonna pause now we're back so uh everyone but kaiser succeeded so with that success, uh, as you guys investigate the noise-filled uh, industrial complex of the dome, you eventually come across um, what looks like a large saw table. Um, I say large in that it's, you know, maybe the size of a bus, and it has all these saws that kind of poke out of uh, holes in it that seem to be like almost like turning, tearing teeth. Uh, it looks like material gets thrown on here fairly regularly, like there's there's signs of damage and like debris and stuff. And nearby, kind of slumped up against uh, the table, is what looks like um, a beetle. Like it looks like a man-shaped beetle, kind of like a Hercules beetle with like the large kind of uh, antler and stuff. But it's made out of car parts, like big, heavy, you know, welded together undercarriage and chassis and moving bits. And it's kind of just slumped up against it, and the side of its head slash thorax have been torn open and has, like, drainage bites on it. Oh. Like, its insides have been sucked completely out. It's empty of essence. Oh like my. a spider. Yep. Would Eyes of the Dead work on something like this? Because it's dead? Or... What well, well, does the it's thing say? What does Eyes of the Dead say? The author uh, needs to pass it on any remains, human or otherwise, that still possesses eyes. It has eyes. And it's otherwise. 
Okay. <laughs> so wits, occult, and wisdom, and it cost me one essence. All right, I'll pause while you roll. All right, we're back. So, uh, Kevin, could you just repeat briefly what that power lets you do now? Okay, so so long as a entity still has eyes and is dead, I can see into their past because I got an exceptional success. I can see two minutes into their past before their death, as kind of a full live action thing. Game. Okay, so uh, two minutes before it died, uh, it was locking horns with another one of its kind up above, uh, like they were battling over territory. It looked like. Like, they were doing a very formal kind of trial-by-combat sort of thing, and actually locking physical horns. And it pushed him off down here, it fell in its head, and kind of was stunned for a bit. And then, uh, from a drain pipe over there, a man-spider, a spider-man came out, and attacked him, and jumped him, and ripped into the side of him, and drank all his fl- essence. And scuttled away into the pipe. Yeah, Kaiser just kind of points in the direction of that drainage pipe. Okay. It died the same way that Mule did. What? It died the same way Mule did. By falling to death? It fell and hit its head. Yeah, a little something happened afterwards, though. Well, I guess we have some lead. Should we change forms for this if we to encounter it? How does that work? How does that work, guys? I'm pretty sure you just change. Do you spend essence for changing? Or no? I don't think so. Yeah. You know, it's just natural. It's part of what you do. I think it takes like a turn, depending on uh, your level of prime of humanity to spirit. Harmony. All right. Well, let's pause and figure it out. So, what are you guys doing for shapeshifting? You said you were doing shapeshifting stuff. Um, so we checked, and so how many? Seven. Then we can shift at no cost if we spend a whole turn on it. So now we, did, we have some time, so we can shift. And I think we decided to shift to Dalu form, both myself and Nicole. So Kevin's already there. And Dalu form is where are people. The dire person. Dire people. The dire person. Um, is there any time limit on this? I know with um, we're a form of the rings, but no, you can fine? just be okay. it all the time. Okay. So we shift that to get some extra strength, as a sacrifice for some small, fine motor skills, but to get also perception, which I think would be useful for our investigation now. All right, so you all shift into your dire forms. And yeah, you're hanging out. You're here. You're around. Okay. So I guess I go to open that drainage hole. Sure. Yeah, you're able to pull that open. Does it have any smell to it? What can you smell? How? When you start to pull the lid off, uh, it's stick. Like it's sticking. Mm -hmm. It has a slick, white, milky kind of uh, elastic resin uh, stuck to the inside of the lid that, like, when you peel off, it's kind of like pulling open a mollusk. It looks like a sort of webbing's been built around it. Fair. Manacle, the look on your face is unhappy. It's so gross. I don't have a very easy stomach right now to begin with, and you just describe things so disgustingly. It's like, ugh. Well, I think the spirit world, it's all mushy and gross. Nature, you're so metal. Okay. So, we have the webbing. So yeah, looks like it's been webbed down. And yeah, the tunnel itself is... Um, it almost looks like it's, uh, it's threaded like a screw. Uh-huh. So, like, the handholds you use to shift down, like, you'd have to go around. Like, you'd have to, like... Be turning, you would have to turn around like a screw with the handles to like safely make your way down without just jumping down in. Huh. Wait, um, does it smell like that spider? Is the scent fresh? Uh, yeah, the scent is fairly fresh, maybe a day. And it does smell like that spider bitch? It does. Okay. Now that we've gotten the scent. We're good to go. Good. So, what does your power do? 
Um, let me go back down to where it is. It's a right, I think? No. Sorry, I completely forgot which one I was trying to look for. Do you want to pause? Yeah, one second here. All right, back. Yeah, I have the Gift of Hunting Impossible Spore. Spore? S-P-O-O-R. Um, basically, uh, makes you crazy good at, at tracking. Like, your senses are attuned to things that most people would find impossible to track. Like you can, uh, the ling it says like the lingering photons disturbed by the prey's shadow and shit like that are things that you can track. So you are, you're good. Uh, it also doesn't matter how old the trail is. No matter what, you can always track it. Bitchin'. Yeah. Um, it says cost is none or one. Let me, oh, um, if you have to spend an essence uh, to remove any negative modifiers uh, because of how old it is. But this isn't a super old trail, so that's fine. Cool. All right, well, you got the scent, and yeah, it's down this hole, it looks like. Uh, we still have to make tracking rolls. Oh, tracking rolls. Well, what are those like? I mean, it goes down the hole, so until there's a split. Well, yeah. Page 94. 94. Senses. Spirit senses. <laughs> All right, I'll just. Okay, so in the background of Fat Paws, listeners, uh, Nicole ruled to hunt and got a bajillion successes. Uh, so you guys are going to find your way to its lair. Yes, so... and because it was an exceptional success, uh, I slash me get the invisible predator uh, condition, which means that uh, I'm just going to read it off. Your character has so successfully infiltrated her prey's domain that he is oblivious to her presence. The prey gains minus two rolls, or minus two to all rolls to detect or prepare for the hunter's arrival while this condition is active. Um, resolution is the hunter deals damage or otherwise hurts their prey, either through attack, social manipulation, or stealing their possessions. Mm -hmm. So, you guys are gonna, let's get on the path to its lair. Yes. So you guys head down the screw uh, uh, sewer entrance, basically, and slide on down, and it opens up into a cavern underneath this part of the maintenance, or the, the manufacturing area. Uh, this looks like a large trapezoid-shaped tunnel that heads uh, in either direction. The tunnel itself is lined with shavings and cast-off pieces of metal, like there are large um, structural supports that have just been sheared off and left down here, broken pieces of machinery, those old tables with saws on them, uh, and just bits. It looks like a scrapyard of sorts. And when you drop on down, um, there is basically a flowing river of oil mixed in with um, a, a channel cut on either side that has actual lava moving through it. Cool. <laughs> the lava itself, uh, when you look at it, is a sessile and dormant um, serpent, like long stretched out serpent with its scales being the different kind of ripples and runs in the lava. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you follow the trace that, um, character? Leo. Leo? Leo, Leo clearly. Yeah, yeah, Leo. That Leo has basically got on. Uh, eventually this trapezoidal uh, tunnel uh, branches off to the side, and there's a grate, and the grate heads down, and it looks like it's about waist deep in water. Um, and the water itself is um, kind of uh, thick. Like, it, it doesn't move like water should. It's almost like a jello or a glue. Viscous. It's very viscous, almost adhesive. Uh, and moving through that, you eventually come to an antechamber uh, that doesn't quite match up with the architecture of this place. That is a round... A uh, kind of culvern for a sewer that's made of stone instead of metal. So it's like it's like a donut. Like you're on the donut rim, and the center is like a hole that drain that water is draining into slowly. And the top side of it has like chains and like running water down, kind of like how the Nostromo looks in Aliens, where it has all the chains and dripping water. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where you are now, and you're pretty sure that down that hole is the spider's nest. Well, shit. Well, it's good that we found it. So we know where it is now. It doesn't know we found it. So yeah. it's best if we pull back, alert the rest of the pack, and then come in in force. The hunt. Yeah. 
Yes. The hunt. It's on. All right. Well, in that case, we had a bit of a rocky start to the game just because we had to do a bunch of research in the background. So this will be a shorter session. Yep. So next session, we'll start up fresh with you guys gathering the group together to set off the hunt on this spider spirit. Yep. Yes. So in that case, I was Devin, the GM. Nicole. Kevin. And Peter. And this is sponsored by Nobody. Signing off.